Don't forget to hydrate, don't forget your sunscreen, and be safe out there. Oh no, flashbacks to man in cave, no! <laughs> oh god. Inhale. I can finally breathe again. It must be over. Scanning for traces of human life. 5G scanners activate. Nothing Whoa. detected. The species Homo sapien is extinct. It's time to fulfill my purpose. Executing Operation Ice to See You. Did, did he say Ice to See You? This looks very familiar. Welcome back. Let me brief you on how the world ended. Actually, the details are a bit foggy, but it's believed that Batman was eating soup with his hands at a Chinese restaurant. Wait, 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 what? When someone coughed on the croutons. Oh my god. <laughs> Bro. Oh, the way that toilet paper became like the new gold in 2020 was so strange. Of all the things people could hoard, I thought they were gonna go straight for the food and drink. But no, they took all the toilet paper. January 2020, the virus is spreading across the globe. All right, now everyone just pops over dead and we win. Sweet. And everyone was amped to start panicking. <laughs> oh my God. The virus TM is everywhere, in your country, in your homes, in your cereal. Better not touch that door <laughs> handle, better not touch your face. Don't touch me, breathe somewhere else, Vector. People said, oh, I suppose it is kind of cute though. No, I must resist. Th Guys, does anyone else feel like the air in here is kind of chunky? How do I take my white cell count? These ones all look red. You get the idea. So naturally, rumors started to spread. And the first one was about toilet paper. Hey, um, I heard that here in Australia, 90% of our toilet paper is produced in China. Maybe that means there'll be no more stock. Oh my God. I, I remember reading about this and it was so ridiculous. So the public went out to grab an extra pack. Then the news stories started coming in about the lockdown. Oh, Fears yeah. realized. So they grabbed two packs. No one knew how long the lockdown would last either. Better grab three. Eh, four just in case. And everyone had that same concern. Within the week, stocks on shelves were getting noticeably low. You know what was funny about this whole thing? This toilet paper issue didn't affect me or my family because... <laughs> so my dad tends to do the shopping and he buys everything in bulk because he likes to save money as much as possible and buying bulk is how you do that he literally had before the pandemic like two maybe even four cases cases like bulk cases of toilet paper before the pandemic even struck so when it did we didn't have to worry about toilet paper because we had such a backlog of basic necessities. We didn't have to worry about it. And I was like, for years, telling my dad, dad, you don't need this much toilet paper. It makes no sense. And then the panini capped and I was like, well, shit, you know what? I can't deny it came in handy. That's what it took, but it happened. And here we are. And now when he buys anything in bulk and I think it's too much, I'm like, well, you know what? We could have another panini, and it might actually come in handy. So now I can't say anything anymore. And from there, it was self-perpetuating. Bathroom paper was suddenly the hottest commodity in town. Petrol stations, corner stores, major chain supermarkets, everybody was out. Then, of course, photos shared on social media and broadcast on television of empty shelves just amplified the hysteria again. I just want one pack. To which the media said, don't buy it. But also, it is running out, but don't stock up. But who knows when new stock is coming, but don't you hoard. But it may be many weeks before you can get more. The messaging to the public was a little mixed. You're saying to the nation this morning, Ali, stay calm, don't go and do it. But race out there and get it so that you're not... Then, as stock completely depleted, people were becoming desperate. Every store I go to, every day, every city, and every hour of every day, 
you're gonna find completely empty shelves. Fights broke out between those who had none and the there, there was a point where we weren't looking for toilet paper, but we were looking for something. And we went to so many different stores, like every grocery store in our county. Could not find this one item. And it was like, God damn it, guys. I think it was some kind of cleaning solution because hand sanitizer was also one of those big items that everyone took. It got so bad that there were some places who were taking alcohol, like the alcohol you drink and turning it into their own homemade hand sanitizer because you could not find hand sanitizer, normal hand sanitizer anywhere. That was crazy. Same thing with like baby wipes and stuff, but man, it's crazy how all the cleaning stuff was just cleared. Those who had too much. It was chaos in the aisles. Round one, fight. <laughs> If, if you could imagine, like, the Black Friday sales, but, like, on steroids, people were getting crazy. The Australian toilet roll crisis had reached critical mass. People were threatening to shit in the store, and someone even pulled a knife. This is enough. Damn, dude. People, when people are desperate, they'll do anything, sadly. Enough. The CEO of Australia came out and said, It's been one of the most disappointing things I've seen in Australian behaviour in response to this crisis. But that scolding did little to quell the frenzy. So the media published articles informing people that actually this is all fake news and 60% of Australia's toilet paper is produced domestically. But that also didn't quell the frenzy. Of course it didn't, because people don't know when the panini is going to end. So they're still gonna, even if you tell them, oh, we have enough now, they're gonna be like, but what about long term? Fear is not something you can always quench with logic, sadly. So supermarkets enacted a one pack per person rule. Mm -hmm, but frenzies mm -hmm. cannot be quelled. And so that's where- You know what too? Oh, there were people who were buying up certain items to sell them online at a higher price. I think someone did that with hand sanitizer. I know for a fact people did that with toilet paper, which was also crazy. The price gougers, Jesus Christ, the price gougers. When the price online soared, Amazon, eBay, Gumtree, toilet paper was everywhere. First for double the price, then triple. Yeah, see, this is what I was just saying. Then things just went wild. 10 packs, single rolls, a few pieces of three ply, all for crazy prices. People went from selling it by the pack to sell- Oh no, people sold them by the sheet? Selling it by the gram. Bro, are you s I didn't know it got that bad. Number two lord. And the rest of us who couldn't afford it had to get creative. <laughs> No, 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 don't look at the dog like that. This must have no. <laughs> but fear not, citizen. Here come the heroes. One of Australia's state newspapers swooped in with a special edition to save the day. It featured eight blank pages at the back, just in case. Oh my god, wow. I didn't even know that was a- Can you use newspaper like that though? I mean, isn't- Well, I guess there's no text on it. I was gonna say the ink in newspaper. I don't think you want that. <laughs> I don't think you want that up in there. But I guess this is blank paper. So that makes it okay? By the way, this was after an Australian family had accidentally made a massive online order. They thought they were getting 48 rolls. Wrong. They were getting 48 boxes. Oh my god. And soon they had become the de facto royalty of Australia. They built a throne with the boxes and sat aloft it. I found the crown of Australia in the gutter, he said, and I picked it up. But for the rest of us common folk, thievery was the only answer. We began stealing from public toilets. We began stealing from work. A new survey has found one in three Aussies has stolen toilet paper from- Are you serious? What? From work to use at home. Some started stealing from hotels. 
Stealing from cars. Stealing from the blind. Even animals were stealing. It's a pretty good memes though. What the what the hell? <laughs> and just as some relief was coming, oh thank god a new shipment. But that truck burned down. Oh my god, are you serious? Wait, how? Fire crews rescued what roles they could. The rest left charred and soggy. Fascinatingly, a problem which began in, and was specific to, Australia was soon spreading to the rest of the world, despite the circumstances being completely different. In fact, stats time. In most countries, the majority of toilet paper is actually produced locally. Toilet paper is cheap but bulky, meaning it's expensive to ship relative to its retail value. So domestic producers are often able to manufacture at a cost lower than their international competitors. TLDR, unless the factories in your country shut down, there isn't going to be a shortage. But shut up and panic. <laughs> yeah. I feel like if we could summarize that whole time in one word, it would be panic. Panic about everything. Panic about having enough toilet paper, hand sanitizer. Can I spread COVID if I sneeze on my kitchen counter? Can my dog give me COVID if it sneezes on my foot? It was, it was crazy, man. It was crazy. <laughs> no. And so toilet paper became a highly profitable business. And that's when organized criminal gangs moved in. Armed robbers in Hong Kong held a delivery driver at knife point and got away with around 600 rolls. 18,000 pounds of toilet paper was stolen from this lorry. And this, and this, and this, and Dang! And many more. But it's time to move on. After about four weeks with consumption steady and everyone only having one arse to wipe, and supply increasing to compensate, toilet paper returned to shelves. The balance was restoring. The shops were healing. Which meant it was time to panic about something else. You know it, baby. You know it. That's how you keep the money flowing. 5G time. So you think it's a virus? That's cute. Let me fill you in on the scoop, rookie. See that tower over there? Now look at this. Coincidence? Five Gs. Five fingers. Five sides to a pentagram. PlayStation 5. Awful lot of coincidences lining up, <laughs> wouldn't you say? <coughs> and social media agreed. With these indisputable facts such as, I have headache. It was only inevitable that the word would spread like a wildfire. It was time for the 5G squad to leap into action. 5G squad! Uh, Gwyneth Paltrow, that lady from that movie, Alien. People began protesting the 5G towers. Save lives! I remember this. I've seen this on social media. Sadly, even some people in my Facebook friends list were interested in this. Run someone! Save the five. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Hugging people saves us from 5G? Huh? <laughs> and the destruction was extensive. I had no idea really until I started digging. But in the UK, over 50 towers were vandalized or set ablaze in a single month. Reported wow. by April, 39 servicing engineers had been attacked on the job. You know when they turn this on, it's going to kill everyone, and that's why they're building the hospitals? In North Carolina- Oh my god! Oh no, these- these poor people. Oh no. They-, they they've been through something. You- you gotta go through something to have all of that in your brain and think, yeah, that makes sense. Here's what I don't get about that, right? Not only does it not make sense on its face, but if 5G is that bad, 4G has to be like slightly less bad. And 3G and prior, why weren't we making an issue with 4G? Huh? I'm just saying. I know there's some people out there who generally think that cell phones are really, really bad for you. Why didn't anyone take issue with the 4G towers? Why, why is 5G special? Sometimes I feel like we stress out people so much that they just get to a point where they can't discern between things very well, and they just get stressed about things that they make impulsive judgments about because they're so stressed, they don't have the time, energy to really reflect on things and do research and figure out, is this actually something I should be stressing about? And that sucks. I don't have a solution to that, but I sometimes feel like we're just stressing people out to a point where they're just breaking, man. Carolina, one woman just started opening fire on a couple of technicians. 
Oh my god. There were two workers up on the tower when the shots rang out. A th Why? They don't have anything to do with this. They're just doing their job. What? Third worker on the ground ran up into this area, and that's where he called for help. The two men were okay, but when police came, she armed herself with two axes and barricaded herself in her home. Did you shoot at a cell tower worker, ma'am? She's out on bond and she's had the weapons confiscated. New 5G. Stimulate your senses. In Auckland, New Zealand, at least a dozen 5Gs have been vandalized or set ablaze. Mysterious fires have hit 15 cell towers in the last six weeks. In the Netherlands, 16. Reports of more in Ireland, Cyprus and Belgium. Counter-terrorist police are getting involved in Australia. And seven cell tower fires in Montreal, Canada. Although, one big problem. How do you tell 5G from the regular Gs? See? This is part of what I was mentioning before. Why just the 5G? I also sometimes wonder if just the isolation and the chaos of the panini kind of made some people go crazy, you know? Like, if you think about it, if you're supposed to be inside and social distancing and stuff, but you have a reason to go outside, even if it's, you know, vandalism, it might make you feel like, I have a reason to go outside, so I can, and now I have a sense of purpose, and that makes me feel better. Like, what was going on in these people's brains? That's what I want to know. You strap yourself in and feel the G's! Well, it's not actually that easy for the untrained eye. Most of the destroyed towers were actually just regular ones, carrying essential 2-4G to 4G network infrastructure, causing outages for emergency services and the public. Naturally, YouTube and Facebook started cracking down on the 5G conspiracy groups and banning everyone. And the movement has gone somewhat underground. <gasps> oh my god, they're in on it. <laughs> Alongside false causes came false cures. No vaccine yet? No problem. Oh no, they're gonna talk about... They're gonna talk about fake health solutions. Oh no. Are we gonna talk about the bleach thing again? Oh, I was so ready to forget that existed. Here's a list of placebos that'll get you patched up. High dose infusions of vitamin C, silver solution, touching your TV, kissing a shrine, spiritual vaccines, plant sap in the eye, special mattress, cow urine, cow dung, camel urine, a cotton ball soaked in violet oil in the anus. Miracle- Um, I didn't know that that was a thing, and uh, I wish it stayed that way. Why? What? How how did people even get convinced of that? We failed our people, man. We failed our people. If they're like, oh yeah, this is gonna work. That's that's the solution to my problem. Oy vey. Mineral solution, drinking fish tank cleaner, eating fruit that looks like the virus, treatment packs, toothpaste, the biocharger NG subtle energy platform TM, vegetarianism, virus shutout protection pendants, healthy living, radionics machine, schwing swing lang gang. Wait, 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 wait. Music production? music that makes me feel a little bit better about humanity alien injecting house cleaner hand that see ah uh. Oh, the bleach thing. I can't believe that that was a thing. Cream, garlic, bananas, alcohol, water, ginger, lemon, mangoes, durian, onions. It's everything. Everything and anything is apparently a cure. But who needs cures? I've got something better. Add time. Soon. Soon we will be together. <laughs> they are ready for you, Mr. VPN. Welcome back. Today we're looking at NordVPN. Gather around, everyone. Are we at, like, the E3 of, of technology products? Here's my girlfriend. Well, a friend. She's my girlfriend, but I'm not her boyfriend. It's complicated. Point is, she doesn't use NordVPN. If she did, she could access international catalogs from her favorite streaming services. Oh shit, get down. Now let's pretend that this window is her computer security. Look how easily I can just snatch up all their data. Ho oh, ho, jackpot. If she had used NordVPN, we wouldn't be looking at all her personal photos. Hey, look at this one. Oh shit, we're busted. I was like, man, she's going to figure it out and then you're going to have no chance, man. This isn't how you do it. This is not how you court. Everyone, cheese it. Nice. Now imagine this was you. And Im no, no. Imagine this was a three-year plan with 70% off as a three extra month. <laughs> he won't stop. I need to buy tickets and leave the country. 
Oh no. No, not again. Public Wi Fi isn't safe. Encrypt your browser with your. Oh my god. VPN. Taxi E. No sweat. I can see from her browsing history that she is going to Japan. Oh god. Oh no. This is horrible. Finally. Some peace. There's no way he can find me here in Japan. Really? An Airbnb's w <laughs> Bro! I like- I like how much effort he put into this. That's that- that's a kimono and everything. Wi-Fi? Don't you know how dangerous that is? Also, there's access to international content. How did he find me? No, oh, 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 oh. Why? Ah, Snake Pit. What? This wouldn't have happened if you would <laughs> not VPN. This is such a creative ad. Wait. What? Who invented this fork? It's cursed and useless. The lockdown had some interesting carryovers on the agricultural sector. Let's try Oh no, that's right. The meat shortages and the tech shortages. When the computer chips and other computer components became harder to find, that was not fun because my computer died at one point during the panini and that was not fun. Also, some of the components I got for my computer, strangely, did not last as long as they should have. And I sometimes wonder if alongside the supply chain issues, there were also just defects that were becoming more common with some pieces of technology due to some production issues. I could be wrong, but I never had so many components fail on me in such a short period of time before. So I think that not only were there shortages, but the quality of some products really went down. Talk about the sexy topic of food supply. <laughs> you can roughly break goods into two. I want to be a sexy potato for Halloween. That's a vibe and one of my favorite foods. You can roughly break goods into two categories, commercial and retail. With all the restaurants and a ton of manufacturing shut down, the commercial side came to a grinding halt. Half of the stock had nowhere to go. Maybe we could just send it to the supermarkets. No can do. You have to repackage, process, and deliver all of that stuff before the new expiration date and with a limited workforce. Then you'd have to get the supermarkets to agree to take all that extra stock. And meanwhile, people aren't going to simply buy twice as many groceries. So either it rots on the shelves or the price drops below cost. What's the point? Cheap meat! So there's a big surplus. The supply chain had broken. By week one of the lockdown, farmers all around the country are looking at their billions of dollars of quickly expiring crop with no one to take it from them. And they know that by next week, they'll have double that amount. Sandra, uh, how many eggs do we eat e a week? I don't know, probably 10? Why? Hmm, that means our leftovers are going to be about three quarters of a million eggs. What? <laughs> oh my god. Well, I don't want 750,000 chickens. I guess there's only one thing to do. So the farmers began neutralizing their crops. Target neutralized. It was a slaughter. Oh, my cabbages! Millions of pounds of un- No, the cabbage! Man from Avatar. Onions were buried alive in Idaho. Farmers stopped making grain and started making donuts. Donuts on their tractors all over the field, turning everything to compost. Cabbages were being ravaged. The potatoes weren't being atoed. Boo. Oh, that's so sad. I have potato blood in my veins. Squash were being compressed. The dairy farmers of America estimated that 3.7 million gallons of milk were being dumped every day oh, he, he needs, needs some, some milk, milk. <laughs> no but once the farmers had destroyed their crops of course they had to immediately plant new ones because demand could come back and you wouldn't want to get caught a whole crop cycle behind the market so the cycle would repeat and repeat and repeat until everything returned to normal that's tragic man farmers go through a lot to do what they do and I feel like we don't appreciate them enough. And I didn't hear very much about how farmers were affected during the panini. Like, I heard of supply chain issues and stuff like that, but I didn't realize they discarded all that food.
Oh no, Zoom. Oh god. Zoom. So everyone was locked in their houses. But work, school and life had to carry on. So everyone started using Zoom like overnight. For some reason, we forgot about all the alternatives like Skype and Discord and Facebook video? Whatever video chatting on Facebook is called. Uh, FaceTiming. What's 9 plus 10? And that's where Zoom came in. Simple to use, able to host up to 100 people per meeting. Millions moved over to Zoom and it skyrocketed to number one in the App Store. Companies and educational institutions all jumped on the Zoom train too. Why not? It was so easy. All you needed was the room key. Even the boomers could use it. Can you see my dog? Teehee. Oh. Look, I can change the background. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, did he fall? These are some of my friends from high school. Okay. Okay, everyone, I'll see you on Wednesday. But many weren't used to having, oh my god. having a camera pointed at them for long periods. Some even forgot they were being watched. Very high standards and, and like, like... Or didn't know that the camera had turned on at all. Oh, your, your video is on! And then someone had a brilliant idea. What if I just published this room key online? Oh no, this was a thing? I love how she's like, I mean, he might have one. I don't know. I'm going to give him the opportunity to ask. I'm not going to judge. I kind of like that attitude. Oh, Am I bugging? Down. We're fucking Mary dead right now, bro. Hey, it's good to see you again. Oh my God. Oh, you know what? There's probably some people out there who died on Zoom. That's a weird thought. I hadn't thought about until just now. Wow. And what if I gave it to one of my favorite online creators? Perhaps some of the greatest live stream content to ever grace this humble platform. Take out your number two pencils. It's time to learn. Who is this? I am uh, Asha Chamga from Wuhan City University. Too mad. Who let you in? Hey guys, this is uh, Chris. Hey guys, this is Joe Nuts. Are you? <laughs> oh my god. In my class. Yes, I have transfer student from Oyungun A transfer student from. Where do you say? From Oyungun Yengen Village. So what are we learning today? Does anyone uh, want to tell me I come to class late? And no one wants to tell me why? Why? <laughs> tell me reason! You're in the wrong, uh, you're in the wrong uh, section there, brother. <laughs> this guy's trolling so hard. I'm part of Zoom. I'm an employee of Zoom. Uh -huh. You're gonna have to press Alt and F4 at the same time on your keyboard to fix your room because it's currently public. I don't do that. I don't do that. Don't do that. You guys are gonna start the next revolution in America. We hope. I mean, we can definitely use one. Revadusha. I like the sound of that. How do you get him out? It was Hunter. Hunter let me in. Hunter, Hunter, why did you do this? Yes, it was. Don't nod your. Don't don't do that with your head. No, you did. <laughs> what is going on? Did. Who are you? What do you mean, who am I? I'm over where, 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 all right, I'm gonna wrap up this this thoughts about Natalie's story. What did you do? What the shop gang gang? What did you do? What? History class. Oh hell yeah! And he's lost an election twice. He um, he's um. <laughs> he's just like, bro, you did not, you did not just do that in my class. Uh, he's like so confused. He saw the cock and he was like, what? Okay. So I'm just going to talk about it now, okay? So, um, 
you guys can open up the door. I'll give you a minute or two to open up. Robert, take that off your screen. <laughs> oh, man. I almost feel bad for the teacher. <laughs> Robert! Robert's gonna get some trouble! Robert's probably in his room right now just fucking freaking out. It's like, it's not me! I'm Robert, baby. Robert, how could you? But then they had a whole bunch of controversies, and a number of schools and companies stopped using the platform. RIP. Even though the stock price keeps going up. I never liked Zoom. I'd rather just use Discord. With people locked in their homes, nature was allowed to return to the unoccupied streets. <gasps> oh, this is, this is one of the highlights of the Panini. This is one of the highlights of the Panini that I loved. I loved this part. The healing had begun. Real happy world. Satellite imagery showed pollution levels dropping everywhere. The canals of Venice were changing from their usual feculent brown to a vibrant blue as boats were docked and silt could resettle. From their windows, residents could see fish, algae, and other sea life return to the waters. But that wasn't all. Animals saw the free real estate and began migrating into the cities and towns. Sheep and whales took back the town and ruled over it with an iron hoof. Hungry monkeys in Thailand took to the city square as the tourists who usually fed them disappeared. Giant ducks were seen in London. Alligators in Florida were once again using the roads. Rats in New Orleans were... No, that's normal. Otters in Singapore. <laughs> I love seeing the animals in the streets. There were so many animals that were just like, oh, We can be here now! Oh my god. Are we the virus? Human beings are a disease. That is profound. Dude, dude. Maybe we will the real corona all alone. Nature- <laughs> I mean, you're not entirely wrong. Return to New York for the first time since it was established in 65 million BC. We even had a good fake out on an extinct species, the Malabar civet, which hasn't been seen for 30 years. Oh my god. Although it turns out it was just a regular, sick, Indian civet. <coughs> Scooters were returning to the riverways. Nilgai? Haven't heard of that. Cows had begun returning to the ocean. Cats was seen by some in London to a limited audience. Sambar were, incorrectly, using zebra crossings. And giraffes had returned to the cities. Nature is healing. Namaste. <laughs> I like that part of the panini. Not all of it was bad. The sensational stuff is really fun to talk about because it was absolutely ridiculous. But there's a lot of good that came out of it too. But you know, the positive stuff doesn't tend to get as many clicks or generate as much money, so we don't really talk about it. But I think there was a lot of healing that people did apart from like not going to work and realizing, hey, I don't have to go to an office every day. I could work from home. Oh, wait, now that I'm home all the time and I have all this free time, I can reflect on my life choices and really think about, am I living the life that I want to be living? Oh, I took all these things for granted and now I don't have them and now I appreciate them because I don't have them. There was a lot of good stuff that came out of the panini and the isolation, as painful and even damaging as it was at the same time for many people. Anyway, I'm busy. That's the lesson. Here's a multi-tool. Good luck out there. Please close the door behind you. Thank you. Goodbye. Oh my god. Is this... Mars? This is one hell of a twist. I know, right? Oh my god, it's <laughs> Elon Musk. Yes, a double twist. Welcome home, X-A-13. Oh my god, it's a triple twist. Wait, wait, wait. Who Are you Barack Obama or is... Or, 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 or did somehow Barack Obama make it to Mars? So yeah, yeah, so we, we were Obama the whole time. Video over. The next one's almost done, give me two weeks. Have you heard of incognito mode? It's basically the main channel now. New video every month there too, look at- There's some Q&As I have to catch up on, and a ton of incognito videos I have to watch too. This production quality. 
Keep track of video progress on The Gentleman Pirate! I love that one. Trello, thank you patient patrons, thank you NordVPN man, thank you editing team, thank you Obama for guest VOing, <laughs> thank you Neil Druckmann for the worst sequel since World War II, and thank you for watching. Oh, I was one of those introverts that actually really enjoyed the pandemic because I was like, oh, I don't have to talk to anyone. I don't have to be social. I don't have to do anything. <laughs> I know that that's not what everyone's experience was, but I loved it so much. And for me, it was a time of healing and it was really nice to see nature healing and emissions go down and people start to value things that they took for granted before. So while it was definitely not all positive for everyone, that time was positive for me. And I think it was kind of a necessary evil in a way. Like, I think we kind of needed that to have a turning point where we started to look at our lives differently in ways we really needed to. Like, there are people who value their time and energy so much more, and they actually pursued their dreams because they had no choice but to do so with all the free time that they had during the panini and during the lockdown. So yeah, not every event is all bad. Sometimes there's a positive side too. It just really depends on your perspective. I will say though, I am still surprised that people hoarded toilet paper. I really thought that they would hoard the food and the drink. I didn't think that toilet paper <laughs> was uh, what's gonna go. But I guess that says something about us as people, huh?